So DICE finally added the SRO to the main game, 5 months ago, and in true DICE fashion it was completely unusable for 4 months. But they finally fixed it. Now it's good? Or is it? Well, today we're going to look at the Predator SRO, cover how to use it, determine its strengths, weaknesses, and whether you should be running this thing or not. I'd been a long time proponent of bringing the SRO weapon into Battlefield, mainly accounting to the few anti-air solutions which engineers have. The SRO in past games has been a hard to master high skill weapon which can be used to dominate aircraft in ways that other launchers are just unable to. The SRO fires a wired guided missile. This means the missile will constantly move towards where you're aiming, letting you control the path of the projectile. But as anyone who's used this launcher can attest, it's not as simple as just keeping your crosshair on top of your target. Let me show you what happens when you do that. Why does this happen? Well, the missiles have limited speed and turn velocity. This means that if your target is moving faster than your missile, then you're going to miss them. If they're stationary, then this works perfectly, but we're hunting aircraft, which don't often just float there. So how do we hit aircraft with the SRO? First, let me stress that this is not easy. This takes a lot of practice, and if you're someone who is impatient with these things, then this weapon is not for you. Get him, Dan. Oh, he fucking got me, god damn it. Nice. Let me illustrate the strategy using these three aspects. The enemy chopper, the launched missile, your SRO crosshair. This is where you are aiming, and it comes with a vector line which connects the current missile location and your crosshair. You want to try and get the launched missile to lie directly in between you and the enemy chopper and keep it there. From your perspective, the missile should always look like it's obscuring the chopper. It should look like it's on top of the aircraft. Naturally, if you do this, the missile is traveling towards the aircraft. If it remains on top of it, the only result is that the missile hits and kills your target. I could speak somewhat a second language. So what should you be doing with your crosshair in order to achieve this? You should be putting it in a position so that the vector line that attaches the missile and the crosshair passes over your target. The longer this vector line is, the faster your missile will turn. When I am shooting these missiles, all of my focus is on the missile and trying to keep it directly between me and my target. This all sounds super complicated. Why would anyone choose this when Liz's TGM exists? And that in there lies the biggest argument against this weapon. The TGM is so much easier to use against aircraft that it really makes this launcher irrelevant. Right? Well, yes and no. The SRO has some advantages over Lissiles, which I think make it worth mastering. For one, the biggest reason to use this over Lissiles is that they're much harder to spot for aircraft. Lissiles make a very unique sound and appear like a massive red light. Good aircraft players know to dodge TGMs launched at them. The SRO on the other hand is much more subtle, and given how rare it is that players are using them, I found that most players won't even attempt to dodge. You can see this in multiple clips here. I'm launching the missile directly at them and they don't move at all. I also think SRO aircraft kills are much more fun to get compared to Liz kills. Do you enjoy the adrenaline rush of nailing a chopper with a Lissile? Wait until you do the same with an SRO. I mean, look at how beautiful these shots come out. You can also replenish missiles with ammo crates and more importantly, angel loadout drops. So if you're lucky enough to be in a game with the rare and elusive angel who knows and uses his loadout crates, you can replenish every single one of your SRO rounds with one click. Why are you looking at me like that? Look, I can dream, okay? 
The SRO is also amazing at dealing with attack choppers, which have become much more prevalent in recent patches. Being able to deal with them in one hit at far ranges is huge. Your only alternative is Liz, who needs two missiles to finish them, which gives them ample time to run away. If we are considering the advantages of the SRO, then we obviously need to consider the disadvantages. Obviously, it has a very high barrier of entry. Using the SRO is much harder than an M5 or an RPG, and you also have to remain pretty stationary while you use it, which makes you an easy target. The damage on ground vehicles isn't much to write home about either. The damage matches what you get with an M5, but you obviously get more M5 rounds. This means if you aren't hitting your targets, or in my case, wasting them on every single aircraft hit opportunity which comes your way, you'll frequently find that you don't have enough firepower to get the job done. For this reason, I would strongly recommend that you run both the AT grenade and a weapon with an AP underbarrel attachment equipped when you're running the S-Roll. You need this extra oomph in order to finish vehicles in most situations. The three SRAW missiles you spawn with when using Crawford aren't enough to kill a main battle tank, unless every single shot hits the rear and they don't repair or block a shot with APS. <laughs> The reload time on the SRO is crazy long too compared to other launchers, especially since reloading involves just throwing the whole launcher away. Some things to note about the SRO, you can carry 4 missiles but only spawn with 3 when playing as Crawford, so as soon as you see an ammo crate on the map, make getting to it a priority. It's always better to have it and to not need it than the alternative. The weapon excels at medium to long range, since once the missile is launched you need to gather your bearings to line up the shot. Short range shots, which would be easy for an M5 or an RPG, are very hard to hit with this thing. The range on the SRO appears to be close to 400 meters. Make sure you aren't wasting shots aiming for targets you couldn't possibly hit by spotting them to check their range first. You should absolutely be using Crawford as you get an additional missile, which is critical since you can do almost nothing with only two of them. Another reason to not pick Boris Boy. So finally, is the S-Roll worth using in Battlefield 2042? Well I think for the average player, no. Its shortcomings on the ground and large amount of skill required to get the most out of it just can't compare to the alternatives. If you want to be a good all-round engineer, you still want to run Crawford with the RPG. Its high damage is just critical to the role, and you can still nail choppers and jets that get too close with a bit of practice. If you want to focus on aircraft, Liz is still your go. But for those who want to master Battlefield and don't mind putting a lot of time into learning this weapon, the SRO can provide some of the most rewarding gameplay of any Battlefield. I love this thing. I'm still not amazing with it. Obviously you're seeing all of my hits and none of my misses, but I plan on persevering because this weapon is just so much fun. Awesome. And with that, this is the end of the video. Thank you everyone who's made it this far. Drop a like and a subscribe if you enjoy the content and comment below and let me know how you feel about the Predator S-Roll. Personally, I feel like it could use a little bit of a buff, either an additional round or perhaps a buff to bonus damage against vehicle weak points as a reward for skilled aiming. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Take care.